Hi, welcome to Anime Cons TV. We're your source for news and discussions on anime conventions and other fan events. I'm Patrick Delahanty. Uh, every month, Anime Cons TV devotes one episode to your feedback and questions. And uh, so we'll start off this month with the Twitters. Uh, Lawrence Eng asks, do cons have rules in place yet asking people not to live stream panels and events? For example, using Facebook Live. Uh, I've been to some panels where either the guest or the presenter has said, yeah, please don't post pictures online or please don't stream this. Um, it's usually, from what I've seen, it's usually on a event by event basis. Maybe there's a concert and the band doesn't want people taping. Uh, maybe there's a panel and the panelist would prefer you don't record it. Um, there's only one instance I can think of where the entire convention, they've said you can only record in the halls, you can't record pa any panels or events or anything like that. I mean, most usually you can't record in the artist alley or the art show. But the only time, I've only seen it once where you can't record any panels or any events, and that was at Gallifrey One this past year. They just implemented that, I think. And it was pretty frustrating because even the panelists weren't allowed to record their own panels. If they wanted somebody, like, maybe somebody wants to, uh, you know, record just a snippet of some interesting thing in a panel, too bad. So, and it wasn't just guest panels, it was even the fan panels, and that was really frustrating. It seemed a little extreme. Let people decide if they want their own panels to be recorded or not. And especially for a convention like Gallifrey, where it sells out, so it's not like you're losing sales. It's not like, oh, I can just stay home and watch the convention online. It makes no sense. I hope Gallifrey changes that, because that's a dumb policy. Anyway, uh, on YouTube, some people are still... <laughs> Sent, uh, sending in what they're doing with their badges. Uh, the J-Rock Freak got in the habit of using uh, their badges for bookmarks for their manga and any books that they read. Uh, Shigure Media collects as many as they can in a badge wallet they got at ASEN 2014. Vega Loves keeps theirs in a big photo album and tosses the lanyards most of the time. And Mike Insanity hangs them by the lanyard on his closet doorknob. Uh, if they didn't have a lanyard, he pins them to a badge that did. So there's even more ideas. Uh, also on YouTube, Nico Miki writes in response to our Fall Kraken Con 2015 report. That's, that's a while ago. This was my first convention. I was 12 at the time, and I was lured to come with my sister for her 15th birthday. We went as R Wonderful Rush Nico and Maki, I was Nico, along with her two closest friends who also cosplayed as some characters. I forgot who one was from Free. Uh, and I had zero clue what to expect. This con was absolutely amazing. I haven't been to Kraken Con since, but I'd love to go again. You should. Kraken Cons, everyone I've been to has been really well organized. Uh, this particular one was the one on the ship, on the USS Hornet, so that was fascinating. Um, but yeah, even if they're at the Oakland Convention Center, uh, or back when they were in South San Francisco, it's been a great event, and I've always had fun there. And there's a lot of great fans that go, so yeah, check out Kraken Con again, or check out HydraCon, their other non-anime, their more comic convention event down in Santa Clara. Um, Pimp Master S Seam Swag <laughs> responds to our Don't Be That Guy video on cosplay photography, saying, More people need to watch this. You would think common decency would be common sense, but unsurprisingly, there are blockheads in this world. Yeah, I, I think more people should pay attention to our Don't Be That Guy videos. Uh, hopefully we can do a lot more of those, because those are a lot of fun. Um, Joe commented on our convention badge episode, saying, This guy's shirt is great. Well... I'm this guy, and uh, this was the shirt I was wearing in that episode. It is a Dark Side of the Moon slash Pokemon slash Rabbits reference, uh, and I got it on uh, T-Fury. So if you're looking for this awesome shirt, check out T-Fury. They are not a sponsor. Uh, I just like their stuff. Uh, this is not T-Fury. This is Tech TV. You can't, you can't get these anymore. Um, 
DHM commented on our report from last year's PortCon Maine saying, I live in Portland, Maine, and I went today. It's amazing. Uh, and let's see, we got an email from Jake. Jake writes, Greetings. I recently attended an amazement over the Memorial Day holiday and ran into an interesting situation. In the Dales Hall, there was a huge team of people promoting an all-genre convention called Rally Supercon, which was to take place a month and a half later in the ex same exact location. This new convention is run by some Florida-based company. All they do is this type of weekend event. In some ways, it was nice to have another convention locally that I could attend, but it comes off as a bit much considering it's their first year trying out in the state, as well as moving into our largest convention center. Another concern I have is that Animazement is a nonprofit that grew organically over the last 20 years, and it feels like they are encroaching considering they have, they're inviting many guests in the anime and cosplay community. Also, from what I have seen from a distance, their programming feels sparse for content beyond autograph sessions and most guests only having one panel. What are your opinions on these all-genre conventions? Do you feel like this is normal practice? My biggest concern is that this convention, if it makes it past one year, will bleed in amazement's attendance. Thank you for your time, Jake. Um, you're right to be concerned. These uh, Supercon, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the Florida Supercon. I haven't actually been to their events, but I know that type of event. And they, they've run a bunch down in Florida. Um, they, they've done a couple anime-focused conventions. And this, they may promote it as a comic convention, but it's really one of those... Um, pop culture, all fandom conventions. It's kind of, they're trying to be a catch-all. And a lot of conventions are doing that now. They may have Comic Con in their name, but you won't find a comic vendor at all. They'll be all pop culture. They're bringing major celebrities from movies and TV shows, and it's basically an autograph meat market. And uh, some people love that. They, they see their favorite celebrity, they go, they cosplay, they have a good time, but those conventions seem to focus on uh, attracting the autograph hounds and the people that want to meet their favorite star. And they're not so much for the people that are there for uh, uh, a variety of programming, for, for that sort of experience. Uh, I think the people who go to anime conventions, they're looking for uh, intelligent discussions in panels, they're looking for great cosplay, they may be looking for some deals in the dealer's room. Uh, you know, if you get, if you're a fan of the dubs, then you want to meet some of the voice actors from that. Um, and the, it's really two different things. And it's, it's amazing how there's multiple types of conventions. And, you know, Animazement is fan run and this, or New York Comic Con or the Wizard World ones, they're all, uh, corporate. And so there's that sort of culture, but you also... It's more the type of convention because somebody could have a fan run uh, autograph convention and it would be the same thing as the corporate one. So it's really just a question of what kind of convention experience are you looking for. And a lot of these comic conventions have a vastly different experience than the ones that are the typical anime conventions where you've got tons of panels and uh, all sorts of other programming. Whereas, you know, your Wizard Worlds and Silicon Valley Comic Cons and stuff, they've got, they might have a cosplay contest and any panels are very limited and maybe they even charge extra for some of the big name actors. Uh, and then they're pretty much there to sell you autographs for these actors they're bringing in. And uh, we've seen a lot more of these uh, Comic Cons pop, pop up. And that's just because, you know, the reputation, everybody knows San Diego Comic-Con and like, oh, I got to do that in my neighborhood and attract thousands of people and make tons of money. And now there's so many of them popping up everywhere. And then there's a bunch that are spreading out to other cities. You've got the Supercon one, you've got uh, Reed is, uh, they've taken over a bunch of conventions and not, they've got New York Comic-Con, but they've also uh, taken over Emerald City Comic-Con, they've got C2E2, and so those are spreading, but then you've got the other ones that are uh, in uh, all the smaller cities. So you, you can literally put in any city name in the U.S. and type Comic-Con after that, and there's probably a comic convention there. And we're hitting some sort of market saturation. What I've seen, I mean, I, I'm Pretty much at the end of the year, I focus on the anime convention attendance, 
but that is even showing it. There's we're reaching a saturation in this, so many conventions that it's hurting the attendance of all conventions because people can only go to so many a year and when you have literally one a month in some of the more popular areas you can't sustain that and so there's not room for these conventions to grow so they're either the attention uh, the attendance on these conventions is just starting to plateau or in some cases drop and that's why we've seen a lot of conventions that have just shut down over the years because maybe they planned for more growth and it stopped or it went down and it's hurting them and uh, so you know as for what would happen to animazement if you know if people may see like oh well this is just anime but then there's this other thing it's got all these other things and I mean, usually people who like anime like other things too, so they may be attracted to that. And so, uh, not just anime, but every convention needs to watch out. And uh, I'm not saying they need to expand, they could keep their focus, but uh, yeah, the growth, it's slowing down. Uh, we got an email from Sophie who writes, my name is Sophie and I'm 16. I've been following you for a few weeks now and I figured I would send you guys an email. I really like your content and I was glad I found your channel since I'm forever searching for videos to play while I make my cosplay stuff. Speaking of which, what are your thoughts on cosplay? Also, where are you based out of? I live in Virginia and I was wondering if you ever come down here for any cons. Anyway, keep up the great work and I can't wait for your next video. Ah, well, thanks for watching, Sophie. Um, yeah, I cosplay. Actually, everybody in this podcast has cosplayed at one point. Some of us cosplay more than others. Uh, Elizabeth makes a billion new costumes for every convention she goes to and she's got a cosplay help episode coming up in a few weeks and uh, uh, if you look at her YouTube channel I actually put a playlist of all the cosplay help episodes if you just want to watch those they're in there um, but uh, as for where we're based out of I'm on the west coast uh, Svetlana and I are out here on the west coast Elizabeth, Doug, Rob and Shiva are all in New England and uh, Movie Phone Guy, who has done a few episodes, he's up in uh, New England too. So, yeah, we cover East and West Coast. Uh, occasionally we get something in between. Uh, we have, I think Doug did a report from uh, NecoCon one year. I think that's the only one we've had. In, well, we did. Uh, yeah, we did a Anime USA once, and that was in Virginia. We've done. Katsukon. Uh, Doug's going to Otakon and that's in DC but I think that's I think Otakon in DC is the closest we're getting to Virginia this year which is pretty close. Um, but uh, yeah so thanks for watching and uh, hope you keep watching. Uh, we got an email from James who says uh, it's sad when an otaku tosses a badge but if the con in question is a bad one then I agree. In fact, I'm only placing badges to good cons or ones that I liked into my photo album. I also like Patrick's convention ribbons. I didn't know that conventions did that. They looked cool and beautiful and I would like to go to a convention that has those. Uh, those convention ribbons, actually, some, I think most of them I've had are unofficial. A uh, few conventions will put guest or staff or something on, on their ribbons, but most of the ones I have are unofficial. They're made by fans given out to other fans. So you don't have to wait for a convention that has those. Just find fans that have it or print some of your own and give them out. It's a great way to make friends. Um, a, a lot of the ones I've seen are from Marco Promotions. So if you Google that, you can find and make some there. Uh, they're also not an advertiser. I just think they have a good deal. So check it out. Um, James continues. I also liked Doug's con report on Anime Next and Patrick's con report on Hydra Comic Con. Both conventions seem to be doing well, and I'm curious about Hydra Comic Con. Hope that there aren't any Hydra agents sneaking around there. But seriously, it was a mellow con, and I would like to attend it. I would, however, like to attend Kraken Con first, and then Hydra to do a personal comparison. Before I end, I was surprised to learn that you guys are going to three months worth of con reports starting with this month. Wow, I can't wait to see them. Till next time, this is your loyal follower, friend, and lover of anime, James the Dark Kiba. Uh, thanks, James. Uh, yeah, Hydro Comic Con and Kraken Con, they're run by the same people. So 
there's really not much to compare between that and Kraken Con. One's a comic con, which is more pop culture, but uh, one's that general pop culture convention, and uh, Kraken Con is more anime and cartoons, animation focused. Um, other than that, they're the same staff and there's a lot of the same feel. And I like them both a lot. They're very well organized. Um, I haven't been to Anime Next in a few years. I think five years now. But uh, So I can't talk about that. Uh, let's see. Up next, oh, we've got some voicemails. So uh, let's take a listen to those. Got them here on my phone because it's voicemail. Take a second to load. Here we go. Hey, Anime Con TV, it's Mookie Phone here, and I really miss you. I love you so, 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 so much. I can't put you on at the same time. I'm going to call you over and over and over. I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> All right, something sounds weird with his voice there. I'll get another one. Let's see what this is. Here we go. Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Grab my glasses, I'm out the door. I'm going to hit this city. Before I leave, I will brush my teeth with a bottle of Jack. Cause when I leave for the night, I ain't coming back. I'm talking pedicures on a- oh, Got cut off. Oh well. Uh, get another one here. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Also random voicemail. Happy birthday. To someone. Uh, yeah, my birthday's in March, and the podcast's birthday is in January. So, all right, one more. It's movie film. There's less than a week left to work on May 2017. There's no time like crunch time. I'm looking forward to seeing some of you there. Say hi if you get a chance. Pork on Maine 2017? I'm supposed to report on that! lot of fun um, yeah I just got back from PortCon um, and I, we've report this was PortCon's 16th year it started in 2002 uh, and so I've been to PortCon every year except 2010 when I had to go to my cousin's wedding and we've reported on PortCon for the site uh, and then the podcast every year since it started. Um, when I was on staff, I didn't report on the con. Others on the podcast did, but uh, we've totally covered it. And so what's left to say, because after its 16th year, my 15th year attending, what can we say that we haven't said already? I mean, I could just show you all the reports from every time we've reported on PortCon. Uh, so I guess I can talk about what might have been different. Um, 
not a whole lot <laughs> because this is port Crown was again at the wyndham hotel i think it's like the third name this hotel has had since it started um and Porcon's been there all but uh, four years of its existence, so we know it pretty well. Uh, it's iconic hotel if you're a Mainer because it's the one that has two columns, the two towers of two cylinders sticking up next to the main mall. And uh, Porcon is a multi-genre convention, so it, its main focus is probably anime, but there's uh, programming for comics, for sci-fi, for steampunk, for furry, for... Actually, you look at this list here for fancons.com. We've got anime, comic books, costumes, fantasy, furry, gaming, horror, sci-fi, steampunk, toys, TV, media, video games. That's PortCon. Every one of those PortCon hits it's in one way or another. Some more than others. Like, more anime than steampunk. But uh, yeah, this year there's a bunch of furry meetups. Uh, there was uh, fantasy with Harry Potter stuff, and there was video gaming, there was card gaming going on. So there's a lot of stuff going on at PortCon. Um, they have, long ago, they, they went well beyond the capacity of this hotel. Uh, so they had to, I don't know how many years ago, it was probably like 10 years ago now, they expanded outside of the hotel into a tent. And so now there's a main events tent where all of the biggest programming is held. Uh, you've got your masquerade out there. They did a, um, uh, a lip sync competition out there and that was a huge hit. Um, and then they've got some panel rooms inside the hotel. Um, a few, a couple of years ago, they moved the gaming across the street to the main mall and they've rented out space in the mall for their gaming and their video games. And, uh, so that is where that stuff is now, which opened up more space at the hotel. So they turned one of those rooms into a panel room. And so there's more room for panels, uh, at the hotel. Uh, they've got other events there. They do, uh, Baffa, which is hitting yourself with the foam swords. There's a vendor's room. Uh, they have a garage sale where people can bring in some of the stuff they want to sell and sell it to other port con attendees. There's the artist alley. And uh, so there's plenty going on at port con. So if there's no panels that you want to attend at a certain time, there's the vendor's room to check out artist alley. And there's tons of artists and, and vendors. They have a marketplace that's attached to the artist alley. So it's not quite artists, but it's more like small little indie companies. So there was, uh, you know, card game creator there and uh, some local crafts and, uh, you know, stuff like that, uh, costumes. Um, for guests, they have, a, it's, I mean, Port Con covers a lot of topics. So they have guests that cover a lot of different things too. There were uh, actors, artists, cosplayers, a lot more people involved with movies from the production angle or you know, making comics, making cosplay. Um, and there's a lot of cosplay gatherings for fans too. They'll organize these themselves and there was Voltron gathering and a furry gathering and all all sorts of people organize these on the Facebook groups. So they found a bunch of other people in the same costumes. They could get together and meet up at a certain time to get pictures together. And that's the type of convention PortCon is. It's very community driven and community focused. And so that gives it a really friendly feel. And it, it feels like you're with your kind, you're with your family. And it's a, has that small con feel, even though they've passed 3,000 attendees. And it, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, as for food options, it's pretty standard. Uh, there's a lot, and it hasn't really changed over the last uh, couple of years. There's a Chipotle right next door. There's a Starbucks. Uh, the hotel has some food they're serving in the hotel in a little uh, area near the bar and they can you can get their world famous tater tots there uh you know the everybody there loves the tater tots there's nothing special about them they're just tater tots really that's all that matters 
Uh, but across the street at the mall, there's a food court, so unlimited options there, plenty of seating, and it's low cost, so food is never a problem. The con is low cost, too, because even if you show up at the door on the day, it's only 30 bucks to get in, whereas some conventions would charge you two or three times that for one day. Um, and then if you're two days, another five bucks, 35 bucks. You're going for the whole weekend, it's still really cheap at the door. If you pay in advance, you pay even less. Uh, and because PortCon expanded to the mall space uh, a couple of years ago, and because the weather was nice and people were outside or out in the tent, uh, the crowds were spread out, which made it seem nice and light. Uh, before they had the mall space, and if the weather was bad, everybody's inside and it got pretty crowded, but this year was really good. Uh, the crowds weren't too bad, uh, but they had more attendance than they've ever had before, so it was really well done, and I liked that. And uh, also, people who were at PortCon, uh, some of you may have gotten these in your bag. Little postcards for fancons.com and animecons.com. So a little bonus for you. Um, and we also gave out these at HydraCon, too. So both West and East Coast. Um, I'll be giving out some of these at Nerdtacular. And uh, we'll see how many I've got left. I'll, Hopefully get them out at some other convention. Uh, and uh, so yeah, really there's not much else to say about PortCon because I've talked about it all before. I went with uh, my wife and my niece and she cosplayed, uh, m my niece cosplayed, she's cosplayed there every year she's gone and she's always had a great time. And apparently some of her friends were there but she didn't tell us. She was texting them. It's like, who are you texting? Oh, one of my friends, he's here. He said he saw Deadpool. I don't know who that is. but uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I'll, I'll be back next year with my niece, probably with my wife too. And, uh, you know, we were going to cosplay with her, but our costume, we got busy because we had stuff to do. Um, she's working on projects. I'm working on updating the website. And uh, so... Hopefully next year our costumes will have have those ready and uh, we'll all cosplay together. Maybe I convince more of my family to go with us. But uh, oh, another thing, you know, PortCon. There, I uh, we'll just want to show off the program guide here. Uh, the theme this year was uh, "Welcome to the Carnival," and uh, they, th every year they do this, and I think it's really creative. It's just newsprint, and it's put together. You know, it's just the bare essentials. You get your schedule, you get your list of guests like Laura Woodhull, John Swayze, Alison Lee Rosenfeld, um, and then uh, a coloring page, uh, information about events, a couple ads, and uh, an ad for next year. Next year, PortCon is June 21st to 24th, 2018. Uh, for a day, you can register ahead of time uh, by June 1st 2018 if you register ahead of time 40 bucks for four days it runs Thursday through Sunday so yeah check it out if you're in New England it's a lot of fun if you haven't been to PortCon before you should definitely check it out um, and uh, that about does it for the PortCon report uh, I think it's probably time to wrap up our feedback episode this is like a twofer you get a con report and a feedback episode all together this is probably going to be a long episode. <laughs> eh, oh well. Uh, so let's take a look at all of the conventions that are coming up through Labor Day 2017 as found on fancons.com. By the way, I noticed that because there's so many conventions in the summer, last month's scrolled by really fast. So I'm going to give it a little more time this week, or this month, and hopefully they'll actually be readable <laughs> because there's so many conventions in the summer. Uh, but yeah, here's all the conventions that coming up through Labor Day.
This episode of Anime Clowns TV is brought to you by Audible. You must have heard of Audible. They have the world's largest selection of digital audiobooks. Audio, uh, Audible customers can listen anytime and anywhere to professionally narrated audiobooks across a wide range of genres, including bestsellers, new releases, sci-fi, romances, classics, and more. Um, one of my favorite books is uh, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. Uh, it's, uh, it's coming out as a movie, I think next year, but it's so well done. And the audiobook is read by Will Wheaton. So really, if you haven't read Ready Player One, check it out, it's on Audible, and you can get it for free with our trial. Uh, if you're in the US or Canada, sign up now, and we'll give you two free books. So you get Ready Player One and some other book. Uh, and you'll start with two credits, and you'll get another book credit every month. Uh, to sign up and get your 30-day free trial and those two free audiobooks, go to audible.animecons.tv. That's audible animecons.tv We thank Audible for their support of Animecons TV. And coming up on Animecons TV next week, I'm in Utah for Nerdtacular, the Frog Pants Network convention, along with Diamond Club. And uh, after that, Elizabeth's doing a cosplay help episode on a repair kit. Uh, and coming up after that, we're going to continue our convention report marathon. Uh, there's a report from Plastic City Comic Con, Bricks by the Bay, Cape, Otacon, Boston Comic Con. And that's almost all of our episodes until mid-September. Uh, we're going to have a couple other feedback episodes and some other episodes thrown in there. But uh, there's a lot of con reports coming up, so make sure you're subscribed. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to us on YouTube or uh, in iTunes, Apple Podcasts, uh, anywhere podcasts are, we're there, subscribe. Uh, and also, it, we love hearing from viewers every month. So if you want to be on our August feedback episode, you can uh, leave a comment on our YouTube videos or uh, leave us a voicemail at 762-ADEQUATE at 762-233-7828. Uh, you can also email us at podcast at animecons.tv and uh, tell your friends about Animecons TV. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and the year's half over. I don't know if we're going to hit that. So on YouTube, subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. You know, if you're working on cosplay with friends, just put us on in the background and tell your friends, hey, you should uh, subscribe to this show. They get some good episodes. Check it out every now and then. You know, get the word out there. Uh, we do new episodes every Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. That's when they're published, uh, both on YouTube and in our feeds. And uh, we post about them on Facebook and Twitter. So if you're following us there, you can easily find out whenever there's a new episode up. Uh, to subscribe, uh, I mentioned this before, itunes.animecons.tv. Uh, you can just search Animecons TV on YouTube. You can watch on our site at animecons.tv or check out our new Apple TV app. Uh, if, you go, if you've got the newer Apple TV that allows apps, the fourth generation one, uh, down, look for Animecons TV and download that app and it gives you access to all the episodes since we went weekly. It also lets you see every episode of the extras. So if you want to watch a whole bunch of uh, cosplay competitions, it's right there for you in glorious HD. So please check that out. Um, also, if you use iOS, if you get an iPhone or an iPad, uh, check out our AnimeCons.com stickers. If you go to the Messages app and uh, the little uh, the little A icon when you when you type in a message, if you hit that, you can go and add in more apps with for stickers and uh, other apps that interact with messages. And so, if you go to that A. Hit that, and then you hit the little dots down in the corner, and you can hit store. And so you can bring up the iOS st uh, messages app store. If you go to manage, you can see what apps you have installed already. And there's a little, uh, little magnifying glass up in the corner. So hit that to search, and just search for Animecons. Animecons. 
and that should show up in the autocomplete enemycons.com stickers. Hit that and you can get stickers. Just install it and then whenever you want to use them, just hit that little A icon in your messages app and you can either tap a sticker to put it up in a message or you can hold down the sticker and then drag it on top of a message. A lot of people don't know you can do that. It's a lot of fun to just drag stickers and you can pinch and zoom and rotate the stickers. So have fun with that. Get your, send some stickers to uh, your friends. Uh, and the stickers, I mean, we've got uh, Connie here. This is Connie, our mascot. And we use this for the AnimeCons TV art. Uh, this was done by Svetlana Shmakova. And so you can get the art that she did for Connie with the camera. There's Connie jumping. Uh, we also got some of the art that Nami did back in the older episodes, back when we were the uh, AnimeCons.com podcast, before we called ourselves AnimeCons TV. And it's one of them down here. So there's some of this older art here. And uh, you can also get our original version of the mascot drawn by Ricky Lakoti, um, where she was holding a cake with fish on it. And so all the, uh, all the mascot art we've got is in there. Uh, we'll be adding some more soon, but that'll be a free update. And these are free stickers too. So just get them, enjoy, and uh, keep watching. See you next week with Nerdtacular. Start over here, make your saber on the farm, pull over again, 